Oh, hello there. My name's Richard Schneeman. I'd like to introduce you to SQL injection. SQL injection is used to attack databases. Uh, this is a fairly common attack. It's probably one of the most common attacks of any system that's using a database. In very, very recent history, uh, Yahoo was actually attacked and lost a bunch of passwords that they were storing in plain text. So that's um, that's two bads on them. That's, uh, I can't believe that's horrible. Uh, so, you know, hopefully one day you're as big as Yahoo. How can you protect yourself against these things? Well, before we can tell you how to protect against them, we'll actually introduce you into how to um, add a vulnerability to your to your website. Um, the difficult part comes from our website being powered by a database. And since we're powered by a database, we probably need to let users access that data somehow. So, you know, maybe they are, it's, uh, if we're making some sort of a social application, kind of like Gowalla or Facebook, and you're searching for users by name, well, you need to have a search field, and then they would type in, say, Richard Schneeman, and, and you would hit your database and look and say, hey, I want a user named Richard Schneeman. And um, since we, at this point in time, we're actually executing essentially arbitrary code inside of our our database um, we we need to make sure that we can sanitize it first but as promised here's a quick introduction into what a SQL injection attack looks like so first of all a little string review we, we have a variable named Richard and if we if we want we can embed that uh, variable inside of another string. So if we say name is equal to the variable of name, and then we, we put that out, it's going to output name is equal to Richard. So using this, and also using Active Record, we can build our very own SQL. So uh, we can say user.where name is equal to name. You know, seems seems pretty reasonable. We talked about doing that. Uh, we had a whole section where we talked about uh, in query and, and like query and, and all these different types of queries. Um, so yeah, you know, hey, build build your SQL. Uh, you know, just put a raw variable right into that string. I uh, don't see any problem with that yet. Okay, so when we when we put that out, we're going to get an array of users. Oh, and it looks like there's only one user in it. Eh, it happens to be named Richard. So that's exactly what we would expect. Perfect. So, you know, that's the that's the part hopefully you understand, but um this is really really insecure. But how? Well, let's uh let's exploit it to find out. So, it works if we have username is equal to Richard. So we just get back an array with one element. But what if we were to put in something that's not a username? What if we were to put in this weird string, quote or one equal one? You know, that okay, that that's kind of an odd name. Sure, let's uh, let's throw it in our database and see what happens. Uh, what exactly do we get? Oh, oh, it looks like we just got every single user that exists in our database, all of them, you know. <laughs> Whoops! Uh, how did that happen? You know, we we basically just um, SQL attacked ourselves. We we injected SQL into our database to return back an unexpected value. So uh, let's let's take a look. We actually escaped the string with a quote and then added arbitrary SQL. So um, here is again, this is our name at the top, which is quote or one equals one, and then when we put that into our active record where then this is the SQL it generates. So we can call that to SQL and it says select users dot star from users where name equals empty string or one equals one. Uh, so hey, that actually looks a little bit more understandable, but we didn't want that. We only, we're, we're not looking for, what's this or one equals one stuff? Well, that was provided directly from the variable, that string variable that we put in there. Uh, so this quote, that uh, little single tick came from that on our name, and then that section, that's where that came from. And then finally, we ended up with a, another single quote and a one. So basically, when we take a look at this uh, in terms of what our database is going to say, it says, all right, you want me to find you a user named empty string. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll check for that. Or if a user... Or if one is equal to one, then um, that that's also true. So if the username is equal to empty or one is equal to one, then sure, both of those, you know, if one of those is true, then I'll bring back the user. It just so happens one is always equal to one. So we're 
we're going to bring back all of the users all of the time. Uh, so somebody could do this to expose, you know, not only just their user information, but, you know, maybe all of the user information in your entire, um, entire system. That's, you know, that's not such a great thing. Uh, and, you know, all together, there, there we go. When we put it all together like that, it, it kind of makes a little bit of sense. You know, maybe. And if you want, you can actually try this out in your own console. And it, it, it does work. Um, tried it out in SQLite. And I, uh, I think I tried it out in Postgres as well. So one of my favorite comics, XKCD, on the internet, uh, even even had a comic about it. Uh, where, uh, so, uh, you know, school calls the mom and says, oh, hey, we're, you know, we're, uh, we're having some computer problems, and, says, uh-oh, you know, my son do something, and apparently she named her son Robert, quote, parentheses, semicolon, drop table students, semicolon, dash, dash, so maybe you can guess what that does, uh, you know, so we're escaping our sequel, and then we are executing the, the sequel, drop table students, so this is going to just take all of the data that was in that student's table and get rid of it. It's going to delete. It's not going to back it up. It's not going to say, are you sure? It's going to just drop it. So uh, she's like, oh yeah, yeah, Bobby Tables. That's that's his name. Um, and then the administrator's like, well, you know, hey, we lost all of our student records. And her response, which I think is actually the un- understandable one, is, well, you know, hopefully you've learned to sat- sanitize your database input. So, you know, this is something that's very real and that people can, can do. Uh, luckily, in some databases like uh, Postgres, we're actually protected from this specific attack just a little bit uh, because we can't execute multiple arbitrary SQL commands in one line, but even so, we can still do things like the SQL attack we showed you just a a few seconds ago. So how can we protect ourselves? That's really why I'm talking to you about this, Um, and why haven't we had to even worry about it before? So all all of the examples, with the exception of the one I just showed you, um, are all protected. There's there's no problems, no problems at all. Um, so we've used where previously using a hash syntax, so where name, hash rocket name. So this is protected. If we put in that weird name equals quote or one equal one, uh, it, it, we don't, yeah, we don't get anything. There is no, it's actually going to escape that string um, like and search for a name of that. Uh, you can put it in, uh, check it out. You can put both of those into your own database, and you should find that um, the previous one, the previous query where we were using a string, and uh, you know that was vulnerable, but this one is not. Uh, so by default, Active Record is going to protect you. All right, you know that's a good thing. Um, lots of people use Active Record, and it, it's painful to think about these things. Every single time you write a query, you shouldn't be, have to 100% be focused on, oh man, is this secure? Is this secure? Am I going to have to escape this string? Am I going to have to, well, you know, active record, if you follow the defaults, then active record is going to protect you. If you do need to execute custom SQL, like we did greater than, we did less than, we did, um, you know, not equal to. So if we were wanting to do any of those, if you wanted to do in, then we'll use this question mark syntax. So rather than directly putting our variable into the string, rather than building the string ourselves, we'll say uh, user.where name is equal to question mark is the first argument. And the second argument is the replacement that actually goes in that question mark. Make sense? You know, so we're actually going to substitute, uh, Rails is going to substitute in the name into that question mark, and it is going to make the appropriate uh, string conversion. So we're still safe. We're still secure. This is a good thing. So in general, well, actually 100% of the time, you want to use either the hash syntax, so name, hash rocket is name, or you want to use a, a question mark. If you ever find yourself manually building a SQL string, uh where there is user input touching it, then that's a bad thing. If you are concatenating strings to build SQL to throw into your database, uh, where user input can control and touch some of that, that's a bad thing. Uh, if you are escaping a variable like we did previously from a string, uh, you know that's a bad thing. So just use the hash syntax or the question mark syntax. All right, so we covered a ton about Active Record today. Uh, we are next going to be focusing on arrays, which are incredibly important since they are what we get back from our database most of the time. Either we get a single object or we get an array of objects. So stick around, and we're going to cover.